unbelievable. What I said. I ain't playing no videos. What I said. So can you two hear me? For you two, we dead. They cut all platforms. Wow. Can Facebook see me? But Facebook can't see me. Wow. Wow. So did they miss what I said about Underground Railroad? They, I, I just showed a picture of it. We not let a boy face back up. We showing him again. This kid is an excellent actor. When y'all watch Underground Railroad, I think he did the best act. The girl was on point. The girl was on point, but him right here, put the picture of him with the with the little hat in the suit. Yes. Even the way he walked, his mannerism. In in the series, he's defending Esau. And he's a little boy. He's only like eight, nine years old, and he's defending Esau. Esau trained him to watch his back. But they did such a good, his acting, I've never seen anything. No young actor act the way he act. To the point where I had to remind myself, it's just a movie. <laughs> I wanted him dead so bad. <laughs> okay, we can take him off. We can take him off. Y'all got to watch it. This little boy was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. Uh, wow. Nah, I, I, I'm scared to go into any more scriptures now. Wow. Now, nah, we're going back into the scriptures. Where do we stop? I think you were at 22. First I want to show y'all something. I want to show y'all why this war cannot be stopped. Go ahead. First Chronicles chapter 5, verse 22. For there fell down many slain because the war was of God, and they dwell in their stead. Until God wanted a lot of people dead. Okay, that's why it says the war was of God. A lot of thick times we think, we wake up and we think we're doing our own thing. The Lord has us all programmed, like a computer program. Okay, read on. And they dwell in their stead until the captivity. So it showed you the Lord just assisted them in battle and they killed many, many people. Read on. And the children of the half tribe of Manasseh dwell in the land. They increase from Bash Bafan until Bel Harmon. So they started to grow and prosper. Read on. And Senior and unto Mount Hermon. And these were the head of the house of their fathers. And Ephor and Ishi and Eliel and Azrael and Jeremiah and Hodavia and Jadil, mighty men of valor, famous men. So these were great and famous, powerful Israelite men that the Lord allowed them to prosper because they called on the Lord, and this is what the Lord wanted as a man of war. Read on. And the heads of the house of their fathers, and they transgressed. Against God. What did they do? And they transgressed against 
the God of their fathers. Because the Israelites, whenever things start doing good for you, you turn to sin. You turn to sin. You turn to sin. The Lord just delivered them in battle and prospered them, and now they transgress against God. Read on. And went a whoring after the gods of the people of the land. You start looking at what the other nations got, and you start wanting it. Okay? You, you men, you're doing the same thing. Whatever you see the other nations got, you start whoring after it. You women, you fashion yourself after the evil. The Israelite women are the most beautiful women on the face of the planet. But for you to look at these other heathens and start copying them, you should be ashamed of yourself. Read on. Whom God destroyed before them. Y'all want to follow people who God say are nothing and destroy them. That angers God. So this is what happens. Read on. And the God of Israel stirred up the spirit of Puel, king of Assyria. So God of Israel said, you know what? I'm going to raise up the spirit of the other nations the king of Assyria, read on. And the spirit of the Talgath, Pilnisser, king of Assyria. And he carried them away, even the Reub Reubenites and the Gadites. The Lord just described how great and powerful Reuben and Gad was and how skilled in war. And just like that, God raised up two kings and carried them away. That's how God works. No matter how big and bad and tough you think you are, God will raise up another big, bad, tough guy on the block. And this is what you have to understand about life. No matter how tough, no matter how great you are, God can easily put the spirit on somebody else to take you down. Give me 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 4. He just described how big and powerful God and Reuben was. And as soon as they sinned, he raised up two kings and said, okay, take them down. That's how God works. And y'all need to see this in the Bible. Read on. The book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 21 and verse 4. Now when Jehoram was risen up to the kingdom of his father, he strengthened himself and slew all his brethren with the sword and diverse also of the princes of Israel. So, and this is another thing about, especially black men in general. As soon as you get into power, you start to harm all the people around you. Read it again. Now, when Jehoram was risen up, the kingdom of his father. He now had the kingdom. Read on. He strengthened himself and slew all his brethren. He with killed the all the people who he perceived as a threat. You see this in movies all the time. This is not white people reading about. This is wicked, black, demonic niggers. Read on. With the sword. And diverse also of the princes of Israel. Jehoram was 30 and two years old. He was only 32 years old, young. And all he was thinking about was killing anybody who he thought was a threat. Read on. When he began to reign. And he reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Like as did the house of Ahab, for he had the daughter of Ahab to wife. He had a wicked king's wife, and he was wicked. This is the scripture that says a wicked person, a wicked man is given a wicked woman. Okay, Ahab was a wicked king, and him and his wickedness, he took a wicked king's daughter. Read on. And he wrought. Remember, remember, her mother was the one that had Naboth killed for his vineyard. Ahab was a wicked, weak king that Chase was in his wife's behind. Wicked and let his wife do wickedness. Now his son goes and married Ahab's wicked daughter. Read on. And he wrought that which was evil in the eyes of the Lord. Howbeit the Lord would not destroy the house of David because of the covenant that he had made with David. And he promised to give a that's light. That's why, that's why, that's why, that's why. Some of you have wicked offspring. But if you walked in righteousness, the Most High will preserve your lineage. Okay, read that verse again. How be it? 
the Lord would not destroy the house of David. Why did he not destroy the house of David? Read on. Because of the covenant that he had made with David. Because he made a promise to have kings come out from him. Although it, the part of his lineage, he had one uh, wicked offspring. He said, look, I made a deal. I'm going to preserve you. Read on. And, as and that's he, why you brothers and you brothers that wake up now, don't go off because if you go off, you're destroying your whole line. You came into the truth. If you produce wicked sons and your son produced wicked sons, if you understand about how this thing works, preserving your lineage, you're setting yourself up for destruction. This goes deeper than you woke up now. To secure your legacy, you got to make sure that your sons are on point. If you want to have an uh, everlasting heritage, okay? In this case, the Lord said, I'm not going to destroy everybody because I made a, a, a promise to David. Read on. And as he promised to give a light to him and to his sons forever. He had made a deal that he was going to preserve King David's lineage. Read on. And so it, you got to understand, you brothers sinning right now, it's a big deal. Especially if you have the potential to make your son wicked and your son's sons wicked and everybody else. You messing up now after the truth have been revealed to you, some of you are going to destroy a whole lineage of your offspring because you're stupid and you're wicked and you're evil. And you're going to throw away everything you learned. Not understanding that we come back to this earth. Lord forbid we don't get delivered in our lifetime. You want to make sure that you preserve the next time you come back to this earth. And that's what you're just reading about here now where the Lord said, I'm going to preserve the house of David because I made a promise to him. Read on. In his days, the Edomites revolted from under the dominion of Judah and made themselves a king. Then Jehoram went forth with his princes and all his chariots with them. And he rose up by night and smote the Edomites, which compassed him in, and the captains of the chariots. So the Edomites revolted from under the hand of Judah unto this day. The same time also did Libna revolt from under his hand. Because he had forsaken the Lord God. So the Lord will make your enemies rise up. At one time we had Esau on lockdown. When the Lord looks at us sinning, people who you had power over, the Lord will strengthen them and they will get the upper hand against you. Because you men in your small mind think that you're great and you don't understand that God controls war. When he wants the war to happen, it's inevitable. He'll strengthen the enemy against you. Okay, and that's what I've learned from all the attacks that IUIC had. Some things, I just let it go. I didn't go in because I don't want the Lord to think that I'm here to destroy. I'm only here to defend, not destroy. Some men, I could have destroyed them when they attacked us. But I don't want the Lord to say, you know what? You're going too far. Just defend and keep it moving. And I learned this now from understanding how God dealt with the great men in the Bible. Read on. Go ahead. Because he had forsaken the Lord God of his fathers. Moreover, he made high places in the mountains of Judah and caused the inhabitants of Jerusalem to commit fornication. When it's, whenever you read about the Bible saying high places, it's places of worship that have nothing to do with the God of Israel. Read on. And compelled Judah thereto. And there came a writing to him from Elijah the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of David, thy father, because thou hast not walked in the ways of Jehoshaphat, thy father, nor in the ways of Asa, king of Judah, but has walked in the way of the kings of Israel, and has made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a-whoring 
like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab. You cause all these men to go and follow your wicked father. Read on. And also has slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold. He the- said, you kill men that were better than you. Okay, so now judgment is pronounced on you. Read on. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives. I'm going to send sickness and disease against you. Read it again. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods. And you know why this is important? Because a lot of you are following evil men. And you don't understand that when the Most High brings judgment to that man, it could affect your house. It could affect your children. It could affect your wives. That's what he said. When I get him, I'm going to make sure I get everybody else that's supporting you. And a lot of you support evil on YouTube. A lot of you support evil leaders. And when judgment comes, you're going to get it too. Read it again. Read it again. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and all thy goods, and thou shalt have great sickness. Stop, 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 stop. He said your people, your wives, your children, and all your goods, all your goods, whatever sustains you, I'm going to mess it up. Y'all got to understand this because that's even today why we're not prospering as a people. Y'all marching, y'all want uh, laws to be changed and legislation to be put in place. And you don't understand how the Most High operates. He will put the enemy against you so that no matter what you do, you will not prosper. Read on. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease. And he'll make sure all of you get sick. Read on. By disease of thy bowels. Until thy bowels fall out. That's cancer. That's why when you get cancer, what they start to do, remove this, remove that, cut off this, cut off that. The sickness starts from within. Read it again. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels. Of your insides. Pancreatic cancer, colon cancer. Okay? Throat cancer. All these different cancers, so your insides, your bowels, what they do, they go in and they start cutting things off. Read it again. And thou shalt have great sickness by disease of thy bowels, until thy bowels fall out by reason of sickness day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines. So he said, I'm going to make you sick, and I'm going to raise up an enemy against you. I'm going to make you sick. It's going to, the day, the sickness is going to progress, progress day by day. And while you're sick, I'm going to raise up people against you. This is the God that we serve. This is the God they don't teach you about in Sunday school, in a Christian church. Read on. And of the Arabians. I'm going to, I'm going to raise up the Arabs against you. The nations don't just attack. God controls all the kings of this earth. Nations don't just attack. That's why you cannot stop this war. God orchestrates everything. That's why he's the author and the finisher. Read on. They were near the Ethiopians, and they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance. They took everything that he had. In his eight-year reign, said so he started reigning at 32 until, up until 40. You'll be thinking that it's all good, everything is all nice, and then just like that, everything is turned upside down. Everything is turned upside down just like that. Read it again. And they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house. Broke through all his defenses and raided his house. You should be scared, shaking in your boots if you're, go, if you're sinning against God. Because we already read in the beginning of the class, if your habitation is not right, 
the enemy will come in. If you're not keeping the commandments, the enemy will come into your house because the angels will leave and you will not be defended. It said, the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thee to deliver thee. But when you sin against God, he will allow the enemy to break into your house and take everything. This sends chills to me as I'm reading it. Can we read it one more time, please? And they came up into Judah and break into it and carried away all the substance that was found in the king's house. Wow, he's sick. He's sick. And he's under attack, and they raid in his house and taking everything. Because God is a man of war. And when he say he coming for you, ain't nothing that can stop it. You could call all the reinforcements. You could be, hello, 911. They at my door. 911 will let it go down. Or the call won't go through. This is the God we serve. Read on. And his sons also, and his wives so that there was never a son left him. They killed his sons. They took his wives. They did everything you could think of. He got exterminated. Read on. Save Jehoaz, the youngest of his sons. And after all this, the Lord smote him and his bowels with an incredible disease. And it came to pass that in process of time, after the end of two years, his bowels fell out by reason he of his sickness. He let him die real slow, a slow death. Two years he was sick. What you read about that does that. What you hear about cancer, they were battling cancer. They were battling colon cancer. They were battling stomach cancer, ovarian cancer, pancreatic cancer. After a while, it takes over your entire body. Read on. So he died of sore diseases, and his people made no burning for him. They didn't even give him an honorable burial. What verse was that? The end of verse 18, sir. Uh, read on. And his people made no burning for him, like the burning of his fathers. Thirty and two years old was he when he began to reign. And he reigned in Jerusalem eight years and departed without being desired. Howbeit, they buried him in the city of David, but not in the sepulchers of the king. So he had an eight-year reign and a horrible death and disgraceful. Watch his son get killed, his wives get taken from him because God is a man of war. Nobody gets away with nothing. Now watch this. Give me Revelation chapter 17, verse 1. Too many people was viewing. Okay? Now it's down to, they cut it, and they won't let people get back on. There were thousands watching. The numbers was going up. They said, let's cut it. Now we lucky if we got a couple of hundred, and we were in the thousands. Sorry. The people who needed to hear heard, and the people who care, they'll come back and watch it when it gets reposted. Revelation 17, verse 1. Let's bring this up to today. The book of Revelation, chapter 17, and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. What whore sits upon many waters? The symbolism is that st uh, uh, Statue of Liberty. That woman sits upon the on, on the seas. It's a representation of uh what they say is liberty and peace and and what they say it stands for again. But that's supposed to be a woman holding the torch. Read on And talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. So the Bible says that there's a whore in the future that's going to be judged, that sits upon many waters. It's going to explain to you that the waters later on are people. Read on. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. The kings of the earth 
commit fornication with the United States of America because this is supposed to be the place, the, the great melting pot. Okay? This is supposed to, the, everybody leaves their country to come here to make money for a better opportunity. And they commit fornication because they sell themselves when they come here and they take on the ways, the philosophies, the ideologies of America. They all become Americanized. You start dressing like them, doing drugs like them, the pr promiscuity, the sexual immorality, the stuff they wasn't doing in your country. When you come here for money, you sell yourself. And you deal with the whore. America spreads her spiritual legs and you crawl right in. Read it again. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. And the wine of her fornication is the philosophies. The angel is showing him future judgment of a nation that's going to be destroyed. Read on. And I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven blasphemy heads. Blasphemy meaning lies. Lies. And there's seven different heads, seven different branches to Esau. Okay? The uh, Greeks, the Romans, the Spanish, the, no, I'm messing up the order. Uh... You've got the Russians, you've got the British, you've got the German, okay? And it tells you that the eighth head that's going to come is America because America fought three wars, wars uh, before it was established. The Spanish, the French, and the British. America came out of uh, Britain, okay? Yes, you can show them there, the seven heads. Read it again. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names Yeah, I remember blasphemy. when I was growing up, and there was a cartoon of a dragon with seven heads, and that's what I believed it was. But now I understand through the Bible, precept upon precept, it's a kingdom with seven heads, with seven different groups of people that, comprise this kingdom. You can take that off. Keep reading. Having seven heads and ten horns. The it ten horns are the ten common markets or the EU, the European Union. Read on. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon the Great. Because nobody knew who Babylon the Great was. We know who Babylon the Great is as prophecy is fulfilled. We know who Babylon the Great is by the destruction on this earth, the sexual immorality on this earth, the enslavement of a people on this earth, the robbery, the thieves, the rape, the whoredom, the pillage, the plunder. Now we know who this mystery is, who God was telling us in the future was going to manifest. Read on. And upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations. The mother of all whores. There's one nation on this earth where top whoredom proceeds from. Okay, whatever they say goes. If they sign legislation, law in place to say two men can get married, everybody else follows. Two women can get married, everybody else follows. We could teach this to your kids, everybody else, nobody could challenge them. Whatever they say goes. Don't put what gender is on the birth certificate, everybody else follows. That's abominable. To say, I'm not going to call uh, uh, him what God designed him to be or what God designed her to be. Okay, I'm going to wait and let them decide. 
That makes no sense. That's a sick mind. And that's the spirit that's being pushed by the mother of harlots with the cup full of blasphemy and lies and whoredoms. Read on. And abominations of the earth. And all the abominations, meaning they do everything that goes against the laws of God. Everything that God does not want you to do, there's one nation pushing it. And it's the United States of America, which is Babylon. Read on. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. Why? Because they took, they, now they're masquerading around like us. They stole the name Jesus and put it on a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. And they're drunk because they're not moving like a person with sense that knows that judgment is going to come to them. They really believe that they're who they say they are. And they believe that God cannot stop them or judge them. Read on. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. He's looking like, yo, who the hell is this? With great admiration. Read on. And the angel said unto me, wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman. The angel said, I'm going to tell you the mystery of who this woman is. Read on. Because remember... John the Revelator is seeing things that weren't existing in his time. He's seeing a future of this great place, this great kingdom that's going to destroy his people and destroy countries and be filthy rich and lie and break all God's laws. And he's wondering, yo, who is this? Who's going to rise up and do all this devastation to this earth and the lies? So the angel said, I'm going to tell you who it is. Read on. And of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Because they're being carried by the devil. Read on. The beast that thou sawest was and is not. Read it slowly. The beast that thou sawest. The beast that you saw in the vision. Was and is not. It's not now. It was in the vision, but it's not now. Read on. And shall ascend out of the bottomless and pit. And it shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. When I looked that up, it said the abyss. Read on. And go into perdition. And then go into judgment. Because the judgment is fire. The Lord has a place uh, prepared, a, a place where it was keeping that woman. Okay. And none is going to take it to a place of fire to burn it up in perdition and judgment. Read on. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast. When they, when the people of God finally see, yo, this is the evil, wicked beast kingdom that the Bible spoke of. We're going to be looking at it in an amazement because if you're a man or a woman of God now, you should be amazed at what you're seeing happening from the side of your eyes. Homosexuality being forced down your throat. Medication being forced down your throat. Your kids being forced to follow ungodly acts. The men dressing like women, the women dressing like men. It's all on the, your, your songs. It's all in your movies now. It's all being glorified. This is what John was seeing, and he couldn't believe it. Lies about the Bible. Lies about who the people of God is. Lies about what God looks like. Lies about what Christ looks like. It was unbelievable. It was a mystery. John was like, yo, who is this? Who's going to be able to do this? Read on. When they behold the beast that was. And is not. When they behold the beast that was in the vision and is not now in John's time. Read on. And yet is. And yet is, meaning it's going to manifest itself. Read on. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Seven kingdoms on which the woman sitteth that work with them. Okay, read on. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. Which is the United States of America. At that time, there were wars, okay? And the last 
part of that beast to come. It, it didn't. It, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't established. America wasn't established yet. Okay, remember when uh, Trump was in in power? He said the Europeans could come here because they're part of those seven heads. But he called all the other uh, countries of color. He called them s whole countries. Okay, because the people of color don't make up that beast. He called them asshole countries. He said, I don't mind the Europeans coming because the Europeans, Denmark, Switzerland, Brussels, Germany, Luxembourg, all those comprise those 10 common markets. They're welcome here to do business, to live lovely, to come here on boats, to get everything set up. Everybody else, you call a minority. You call an immigrant. You're nothing. Read on. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth. And because it told you there were seven heads, and an eighth head would come. The United States of America came from Britain, which continued a short space, and then they fell. Read on. And is of the seven, and goeth into perdition. And go into judgment. Judgment is coming because this is what God wants. God wants war and fire and bloodshed and destruction. Read on. And the ten horns, which thou sawest. Which are the ten common markets, or the European Union. Read on. Are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. They have power as long as they align themselves with the United States of America. America makes money and sends it where? Into Swiss bank accounts and sends it overseas. They don't build up those asshole countries. Read on. These have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast. They give their power to the United States of America. Read on. These shall make war with the Lamb. And they're going to make war against Christ and against his people. Once these people are manifest, that's why we keep telling you Christ is a black man with skin so dark it looked like he was burned in a furnace who died and will rise again and come back. Okay? So they're making war now by stopping us teaching about him, stopping us believing on him, stopping us repenting in his name. Stop. They want us to have no hope. They don't want us to believe. That's why when they took power, the first thing they did was set up a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes and tell you, this is your Jesus Christ. This is your Savior. How did they make war with the Lamb? By first lying about who he is, lying about who his people were, and then setting up religion. Read it again. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. But they're going to lose. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. They're going to lose. Okay, because when Christ was here, they nailed him to a cross and killed him. But he sent the spirit of the comforter to us. Now we're reviving what he stands for, who he is. And the people are getting stronger, and the people are having faith, and they're having hope. So the enemy says, yo, we got to stop them from speaking. We must use everything we can against them. How could you be so afraid of a man that died 2,000 years ago? If the Bible is fake, with all the religions you put out, why are they so nervous now and they don't want this dead man to be spoken about? Read it again. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And that's who we work for. Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Read on. And they that are with him are called and chosen and we're, faithful. We're, we're called we're called and chosen. You got to remember that. While this world is at war and people are dying, God has people who are called and chosen. You put down this Bible or you start saying later on, you're not fine. You stupid. You, you deserve the death that you get if you let people pull you away from this Bible. If you let your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your friends, your lover, you're stupid and you deserve the death that you get. Because the Bible says that they're what? Read it again. And they that are with him. They that are with Christ. 
the black Messiah, the King of kings and Lord of lords, that believe in his plan, that believe that his father is a man of war, read on, are called and chosen. They're called to be here, and they're chosen. And I don't know about you, I ain't never been called for nothing in my life. And ain't nobody never chose me for anything. So I feel good right now. I'm good in the space that I'm in. And I'm not giving that up or losing that for anybody else. You could come with your depression. You could come with your sob stories. You could come with your past life and all that foolishness and that baggage. You carry it around with you. I learned now that I'm called and chosen and ain't nobody taking that from me. You want to be stupid and let people take that from you and offer you death and destruction? Be my guest. But don't come to me with none of that. I don't keep those kind of people around me. I keep people around me that believe what the Bible say. Anybody else need to get out my way. Come with all this foolishness. Read it again. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. The nations are going to come to fight against Christ, and they're going to lose. They're going to fight against his people, and they're going to lose. Read on. For he is the Lord, for he is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. You've been called and you've been chosen by God, so you must remain faithful so you can be delivered while this war comes. Read on. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are people. So this whore is sitting on all the people of the earth. How do you know he made all of you put a mask on for a whole year and told you when you could take it off? He's sitting on you. He made it so you couldn't go to school, you couldn't go to work. You didn't have certain foods on your shelf. You couldn't play PlayStation. You couldn't buy your new Jordans. You could only go in the store when they say you could go in the store. Because this whore is sitting on you. He controls you. Read it again. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. Meaning, we saw who controlled the whole world. Whatever America said, y'all followed. President came out and said, this is a Chinese disease. But y'all had to deal with American restrictions. Read on. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Eventually, God is going to put it in the minds of these Europeans to hate the United States of America. Read it again slowly so they can see that this war is inevitable. It can't be stopped. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. The ten common markets, the European unions. Read on. These shall hate the whore. They're going to hate the United States of America. And shall make her desolate. And then attack the United States of America. And naked. And, and shall strip the United States of America. Read on. And shall eat her flesh. And burn her with fire. And it's going to be a nuclear war. God is going to make it so that although they have a union, although they have a coalition, he's going to make them fight against each other, just like I showed you in the scriptures. When we sinned, he rose up nations against us. When he wanted to destroy the Pharaoh, he hardened his heart so that he got his own people killed. God controls the hearts of the kings. And he says, I'm going to make these ten kings turn against the beast. You cannot stop this. You can do peace talks all you want. Read it again. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast. These shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and he naked. Saw, he saw them unified in the vision, then he saw them divided and fighting each other. Read on. And shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts. What? For God hath put in their hearts. What? For God hath put in their hearts. No, they decided to fight on their own. For God hath put in their hearts. No, they're mad about their finances. For God hath put in their hearts. They're mad that they have to wear a mask. For God 
have put in their heart. This is what I've been showing you the whole time. God controls the hearts, the minds of every human being on this earth. And God is going to put it in their heart to do what? For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And what's his will? War. 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 You're not stopping it. You're not praying it away. You're not going to hold, hold hands and, and have an hour of prayer. That's God's will to eventually destroy this place. So y'all better get your minds right and these scriptures tight because the Lord is about to set up the fight. <laughs> That's my best t-shirt this year. <laughs> so I'm going to end it there. I take a couple of questions. All through the Bible, he's controlling every war. All through the Bible. From the beginning all the way to the end, God said he's going to put it in the hearts to fulfill his will. He's going to make them fight even when they know that they're going to destroy the earth. No, nothing nobody could do to stop it. When people are attacking you, God put the spirit on them to attack you. So what you have to do when you're being attacked is draw closer to God. That's the, that's the whole gist of this, the whole what we've been missing. If someone's attacking you, you draw closer to God. Sometimes you draw closer to the enemy. No, me, I don't draw closer to the enemy. I pray against them. I ask God to destroy them and get them and attack them back or show me what I need to do to destroy them because God could control their heart. It's all through the Bible. Yum. What they put, I'm going to cause GOCC to surpass IUIC when I get the chance. Good luck. Not to leave him. He's, in, he's a loser because he's here at this hour. Hey, this is what I don't get. This is what I don't get. There's this dumb, I don't even open the emails no more because it's the same thing over and over. I got people who keep telling me uh, how much they, uh, uh, IUIC is destroying people and you're a horrible teacher, but they come back every week to the class. They come every week to leave the same message every single week. Satan controls you. You're already destroyed. You can't even leave me alone. You can't because Satan has hiked. Satan gave you a bonus. He gave you a company car. He gave you a nice suit. You're like that little boy. <laughs> Bring that little boy back up <laughs> on the Underground Railroad. This is you. We're going to make this the poster child for you people who can't leave me alone. You come here and you talk crap, but you're back next week to hear what I have to say. You're losers. You're on Satan's payroll. <laughs> this is you. <laughs> you cuss me out every week, but come back every week to see what I'm doing. This is you. <laughs> you know, that little boy did excellent acting, and I wanted to reach through the screen and choke him. The little boy made me sick. I had to remind myself this is just a movie. But these are the type of spirits that we're dealing with now. He defend Esau to the end. When Esau got judged, he was crying. I watched it just to see something bad happen to this little boy. But I'm going to leave that part. I'm going to save that. This is you scoffers. <laughs> you can take it off the screen. <laughs> how y'all come back every week and email me? One dumb nigga email every week telling me how bad I am and God is going to judge me. You would think he would just leave. Go to where you're happy. Why would you come back every week to tell me how bad I am? You know why? Because you know deep down inside, I'm right. And the devil is controlling you and you're doing his work. You're just confirmation to me that I'm on the right track because you're putting so much energy into me, you loser. And I'm not going to tell you to go kill yourself 
because that'll take away what God has in store for you. I'm going to say let God bring judgment to you. Yes, they come, they come every week just to thumb down me because Satan tells them, look, you, you know what I pay you for. You know what I pay you for. Go over there and disrupt this man. Me, I love it. I love it. You wicked niggers, come back every week. Email me every week. Show me I'm on the right track, you losers, until God destroys you. You ever watch G.I. Joe? They say knowing is half the battle. Okay, and we know something the rest of the world don't know. We know knowing is half the battle. The rest of the battle is just keep the commandments and live. How they cuss me out every week for a whole year. One wicked nigga keeps saying, I don't even open his emails. God is going to kill you. You're evil. You're the worst teacher on YouTube. But see you next week with another email. <laughs> huh? No, I li listen. When he stops sending the emails, then I'll be like, okay, what's going on? If I don't have no haters, uh, something is not right. How you complain every single week? Why are you taking your time to watch me if I'm such a horrible person? How do we know if the spirit bears witness with our spirit? By how you're conducting yourself as an Israelite. If you're keeping the Sabbath, this, the, the Bible is a spiritual book. And this, the spirit, give me uh, uh, John chapter 6, verse 63. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quicken it. Your spirit has to change. How do you know if the spirit bears witness with your spirit? Because you read about the spirit of God in the Bible, you hear about it, and you become quickened. You change. Read on. The flesh. You, you no longer fulfill the deeds of your flesh. Read on. Profiteth nothing. Because you realize that it's nothing to you to smoke weed, to go to the club, to listen to that stupid music. To be a whoremonger, there's no profit in that no more. You start to say, I want to be spiritual. I want to put my fringes on. I want to grow my beard. I want to keep the Sabbath. I don't want to eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster anymore because my spirit has been quickened. Read on. The words that I speak unto you. You realize now that these words that are being spoken unto you. Read on. They are spirit. This is real spirit. Read on. And they are life. And you realize that this is what keeps you alive. So when you, to understand that the spirit bears witness, you must first understand the spirit of the Bible and see if it bears witness with your spirit. If it doesn't bear witness with your spirit, you're a wicked nigga and you're going to die. Goodbye. Uh, Peace to you, Deacon. Is there a place for inventors in the body? We talk about Men of war, and I'm with the mighty men of God. Nothing against that, but I'm an inventor, minded, and feel out of place. If any of you have anything to bring to Israel United in Christ, you go to our schools, and you meet. Okay, everybody can't come to New York where I am. Whatever state you're in, you go to the school, and you introduce yourself. You first have to be a part of the congregation. People come, they're sending me music, they're telling me they have this, they have that. If I don't know you, the scriptures say for me to prove you first. You can have a multi-billion dollar uh, uh, deal. If your spirit ain't right, I don't care about your invention. Okay, I don't care. I'm not going to attach myself to someone whose spirit is not right. For, for the invention to prosper and not disrupt the work that we're doing, we must know you first. People sending me music, people telling me I make this, I can do that, I can do this, I can build this. I don't care. I've had a lot of people approach me in this truth that were very intelligent, very articulate, very uh, industrious, and they were wicked as hell. 
and they brought nothing but trouble to the congregation and to the body. So the scriptures say, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So what I need to see, I don't care how great your invention is, I want to see how great your mind is, how great your spirit is. Then we can proceed on any other business venture. Okay, so nobody, I don't care how good you are, I don't care how smart you are, I want to know how godly you are before we can proceed anywhere, we can walk any, can two walk together except they be agreed, as it says in Amos chapter 3. Deacon, you talked about lineage, but if you're not in a camp and around righteous women, how are you to pass seed? The Most High will work it out. Some people are not going to be around a body. The Most High will still make, well, understand, 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 understand. That's up to God. That's above my pay grade. Okay, if the Lord wants to preserve you, he can. I can only show you how not to destroy your destiny. But as far as your destiny itself, that's between you and the Most High God. I can show you what you can do to destroy it, and I can show you what you can do to preserve it. Uh... Is it okay to be happy when our enemies... The heathen nations go through bad things here. Yes, it tells you that uh, King David sang about it. Moses, we just read about Moses singing about it in the beginning of the class. They were happy. Okay, in the beginning, I went over that. Deborah got timbrels and harps, and she got her girls, and they did a dance. Okay, the women were dancing. Now, Deacon, I raised up my sons in the truth, but when they all grown up and find work and left my house, now they both have white girlfriend and living with them in their house. The Most High will send you new kids. Don't worry about it. Give me that in uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 42, I think it is. 38, Matthew 19 is 38, I think. What it says. Read it. Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. And everyone that has forsaken houses. Or you lost a house. Read on. Or brethren. You lost brethren. Or sisters. You lost sisters. Or father. You lost your father. Or mother. You lost your mother. Or wife. You lost your wife. Or children. Or your children. You forsaken those children because you said they were uh, uh, heathen women. Read on. Or lands. <laughs> For my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold. You're going to get back a hundred times what you lost. Read on. And, and shall inherit everlasting life. And you're not going to die. You're going to be able to enjoy. So to hell with them. Don't harp on them. If you believe what the Bible says, God says I'm, he's going to give you back a hundred times what you lost. And you're going to live forever. Oh. Uh... Deacon, did you see on the news the Arabs here in America are attacking Jewish people because of what Israel did? It's, it's more than likely for that to happen. I never rejoice in my enemy's downfall, or the Lord will take his anger from them. Uh, I think you're mixing scriptures up. We speak like Christ, we get killed. We speak like Christ, we get killed like Christ, Deacon. Uh, let's see if that's true what that person wrote. Give me Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. Let's see if God agrees with not laughing at the enemies in the other nations. Psalms 2, verse 1. I'll read it. Psalms chapter 2, verse 1. Why do the heathen rage 
and the people imagine a vain thing. What's the vain things? Everything that goes against what the Bible stands for. Okay, the heathen go against the word of God, and they rage while they're doing it, and they imagine vain things. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord. That's why we have same-sex marriage. That's why they're teaching you that stuff in your school. They're teaching it to your kids. That's why they make you break the Sabbath. That's why you're eating the garbage you eat, and you're listening to these lying pastors. That's why you believe that Christ is a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes, because the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. The Israelites are his anointed, okay, saying, let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. They want to break our bonds, and they don't want to hear us speak. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Is that what the Bible says in verse 4? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. They're going to be confused. So my God laughs, I laugh. That's easy. That's in the book of Psalms. Everybody knows that. It said God is going to be laughing when they're in derision and they're being broken and they're being destroyed. Oh, where are we? Where are we? Which one? Now that we're taking those questions, you can block the scoffers. I've had a close encounter with a chariot. If that happens again, would I be tempting the Lord by going to the chariot in the distance? If the chariot manifests itself to you, uh, respect it. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if they're gonna let you come up to it. I, I, I've never heard of what you're saying. If the Lord, if the chariot is manifesting itself to you, it's for a reason. Don't be scared. Uh, Shalom, Deacon. Can you break down Revelation 13, 16? Get that? Deacon, oppression has affected my mental health. How do I endure? By the scriptures. By the scriptures. By the scriptures. If you allow your mental health to take over you and not believe what the Bible says, the Bible, this is medicine. This is what heals you. If we're telling you the scriptures and you're allowing your mental health to be destroyed, then there's nothing we could do for you. All I have to help you is the word of God. Everybody in the sound of my voice, that's where the healing comes from, the word of God and your belief. Okay? Am I being oppressed? Yes. But the word of God is what lifts me up and builds me up. That's why I come here every Friday and I read to you, brothers and sisters. If you don't believe in the word of God, there's nothing I could do to help you. Yes. Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Your right hand is supposed to be your strength and your forehead is where you think. The mark that you receive is sin. Sin. Read on. And that no man might buy or sell, save he had that had the mark, 
or the okay, name. Once you conform to the sinful ways of America, you can prosper. You can get rich. Read on. Or the name of the beast. Or the number of his name. So it's his name or his number. It's not just that. Read it again. I'm sorry. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the that The, the people mark. that came here for buying and selling in exchange, they have to copy the sinful ways of America. Read on. Or the name of the beast. Or the number you of his name. You have to believe in his name and his number. Read on. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred three scores and six. And the bishop did an excellent breakdown on the six six six. If you could find the link there, just put it for them so they could read it. But the mark is sin. It's not no microchip. This Israelite count saying it's a microchip which we find extremely stupid. We don't believe in that. We don't teach that. That you could be keeping the commandments and doing everything you're supposed to do, but they grab you and put a microchip in you, and now you sin. That's the most stupidest thing I ever heard. That's dumb and stupid. That makes no sense, okay? Because they have power over our bodies. So if they lock me up and inject me, I got my fringes on, I'm doing everything, now you're going to see me being sinful. That's the most stupidest thing. There are black Hebrew Israelite camps that teach that. That's dumb as hell. I'm keeping the commandments. I'm doing everything. And the enemy who has power of me drugs me or takes me away. You seeing them shooting everybody down. What if they decide don't shoot them no more, just inject them? Now I don't have fringes on no more. Now I'm smoking weed. I'm breaking the Sabbath. That's the most stupidest thing I ever heard. The only way Esau is, has a, the power of the beast, of the devil, and the word devil means deceiver, and they deceive you into thinking that sin is okay. And now you're marked because Satan put his mark on you, and you're marked for destruction. Give me Revelation chapter 19. Nineteen verse twenty to back what I said. And the beast was taken. The beast is going to be destroyed. Read on. And with him the false prophet. Why are they false prophets? Because they're lying to you to get you to sin. The beast was taken and the false prophet. Read on. That wrought miracles before him. They did miracles before your eyes to make you believe in them and not God. To believe in them and not God. The false prophets and with miracles to make you believe in them and not God. Read on. With which he deceived them. Which he did what? Deceived them. He did what? Deceived. He deceived them. How are we deceived? With lies from the Bible. Lies of religion. Lies of who the people are. When you was acting like wicked black niggas, you smoking weed, you getting high, you go going to Sunday school, you learning about a white man with blonde hair and blue eyes. What they put energy into was to deceiving you into believing that the Bible says something that it does not. Read on. With which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So once you're deceived of what God says, you're marked by the devil. Read on. And them that worshipped his image. And you worship them now. You now believe that what they say is right. It's saying from you, this don't happen to you by no stupid microchip. That's the most dumbest thing that's being taught now. It explains to you that the beast was taken with him and the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast 
and them that worship his image. These both were cast alive into the lake. God is going to burn you up for sin. You're going to die for sinning. I walk righteous all my life. Then someone sticks a microchip in me. Now I sin. That's, that's the most dumbest thing. That's not of my will. I can't control if they, if they grab me, they force me up. I'm telling people, I don't want no shot. I don't want nothing. But somehow they put legislation where now it's forced on me. How, do you, how are you in control? How did I make a decision of whether I live or die? That makes no sense. That's so stupid. And you got Israelite, black Hebrew Israelites that's drilling that into people's head over and over. You're going to get the mark through deception. You're going to be deceived. And what have they deceived us with? They told us that God is white. They told us that Christ is white. They told us the Israelites is white. They told us you could be Methodist, Baptist, Catholic, Jehovah's Witness, Seventh-day Adventist, which when you're any of those things, you don't have to keep God's laws. So you listen to them stupid, dumb, black Hebrew Israelites that's telling you, oh, no matter how righteous you are, they're going to walk up on you and inject the chip inside you, and then you're going to become bad. That's the most stupidest thing I ever heard. That's dumb as hell. Yes, yes, yes. And who started that? White people. When you started hearing that the mark of the beast was a microchip, it was from white people. Then black Hebrew Israelites started to repeat it. We don't teach that here. We don't believe that here. That's right. Christians, by definition, they already have the mark because they're in sin. God is going to kill the people who are sinning. When he says, two-thirds of my people shall be cut off and die, and I will bring the third part through the fire, the third part are the people who repent and believe on Christ as the Savior, the anointed Savior, and they change their lives. That's what the whole gospel is for us, to believe that Christ can save us, and Christ says, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the whole argument with God. But no, there's some mysterious white man that's going to come with something to inject the chip in you that's going to make you. That's so stupid. It doesn't, it doesn't even sound right coming out of my mouth. No matter how hard we try to keep the commandments, there's going to be people who have power over us to inject something in us to make us sin. Then what's the purpose of keeping the commandments for? He can have been studying with IUIC DC for three years. Can I listen or visit other? If you're asking, you should just go. If you've been with us for three years and you're worried about what they're doing, I would just go. I wouldn't ask. Huh? The reason why, uh, if, you, if you mean other IUIC camps, you should know the protocol. You must notify that camp that you're going there. And the reason why we put that in place is because some people have issues in one camp and then they go someplace else and start trouble. So we don't mind y'all visiting the other camps. If you're talking about what well, IUIC, you just got to notify the school. I'm with this school. I want to go there. If that's what you're asking. If you're talking about visiting other Israelite groups, I mean, we don't stop people. You know, we don't stop people if that's what you're asking. As far as internally with us, we have protocol that we follow. Mark of the beast is sin, sin, sin. The beast, the job of the beast is to get you to sin. And if he has to inject something in you to make you sin, then that's not fair. Does that make any sense? I'm walking in righteousness. I got my, my beard. I got my fringes on, everything. And he's like, there goes Deacon Asaph right there. Grab him up, put him in the van. Inject him now. Now everybody's going to see me. Yo, what's up? Why you don't got no fringes on? Why you shave your beard off? What are you doing with that white woman? All I know is I was walking and somebody just injected something into me and now I'm a sinner. You sound stupid. You sound dumb and stupid. All you people that teach that, you sound dumb. That makes no sense. 
What's the pur- purpose of us to strive to keep the commandments and learn them? If someone could just pop up, take control of us, snatch us up and inject something in us, and now we go against our desired will to serve God. You sound stupid. That sounds dumb. You can leave them. If they, that, that's, they, they don't believe. If they're here at 4 o'clock, they don't believe what they believe. I'm not going to the scoffers page to go and tell them what I say. I don't follow you. You follow me. It's, what time is it? It's 4.30. If you're here, you don't believe what you believe. <laughs> you don't believe what you believe. And you're not convincing me that you believe what you believe. If you're here, it's because the devil sent you because I have power over you. And the devil knows. It's like he said, Paul I knew and Christ I know, but nigga, who are you? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> okay, you can leave him. You can leave him. <laughs> uh, you hear at 4 o'clock scoffing? I got power over your life. I control you. You don't control me. If you're here in righteousness, the Lord sent you here. And you're going to rejoice in the word that's being spoke. Think about it. If they really believe the foolishness they're saying, why would they come here? (laughs) It doesn't make any sense. That's like me going to the Ku Klux Klan to tell them, I don't like you. And they're like, we don't care. We don't like niggas either. <laughs> How am I going to disrupt their meeting? You're bad. You need to take those pointy cone things off your head. <laughs> That's stupid. So look, I got to let these men go. It's always a pleasure. Most high in Christ, bless to you. Happy Sabbath. Next week we'll be on our fast. Uh, Some of the emails I didn't get to, I'm going to get to them. It's just some of them I just couldn't write right away. It's taking me some time to gather my thoughts together. Um, It's always a pleasure sitting with y'all, speaking with y'all. It's never enough time. A lot of y'all send some encouraging stuff to me. Um, And I do this as long as y'all want to hear it. I come here as long as you brothers and sisters are here. And you're the driving force behind everything we're doing. Y'all been supporting us. Y'all been holding us down. And I don't have the right words to thank you and congratulate you. The faithful, devout listeners that have been to us through hell and high water, held us down, your words of comfort, your words of support. Okay, we almost home. Don't give up the fight. Most high in Christ bless you, and shalom.